So have you ever wondered how far a helicopter like this can travel on a full tank of gas? This video, we're gonna look into how far I can get. Hi, I'm Rick James from The Pilot Teacher and today we're gonna to be talking about how far a helicopter can fly. This one, not so far, but other ones can get really, really far. So let's look at some of the things that dictate how far this helicopter can go. So many people think that it's just a case of fill it up with gas and let's get going. But there's actually quite a lot of factors that influence how far a helicopter like this can actually travel. With this helicopter going through the air, drag plays a big part in how fast the helicopter can go. And as you can see on the side down here, I've got, ooh, let's see, there we have a utility ski basket. And on this machine, just above it, we have what are called utility pods or cargo pods, also nicknamed squirrel cheeks. And they create serious amounts of drag. So the higher the drag, the slower I'm gonna go through the air. So those two things actually drop my speed down from about 125 knots to around about 100 knots. Um, and that can make a big difference over the full range of the fuel tank. So um, things that stick out in a helicopter create drag, drag slows down the speed. So obviously, speed plays a big part. Uh, so obviously speed plays a huge part in how far a helicopter goes because the faster it goes, the more ground it covers for every minute it is in flight. So with me traveling about 100 knots in this thing, um, I have about two and a half hours in the fuel tank, maybe three if I can really milk it out. Um, so with no wind, I can get about 250 miles. So it's not too much. But if I now ramp this up to 150 knots and I can go 150 miles in an hour, um, you know, you start getting up to around about the 400 miles, 450 miles on a full tank of gas. So uh, the speed at which a helicopter flies is very important as to how far it can get. The other thing is obviously his fuel tank size. He's got a big ass fuel tank on it. It's gonna go for a long, long way, but fuel weighs a lot. And the more fuel you have on, the less weight it can carry inside the cabin. Um, so if the aircraft is designed well, generally you'll have two and a half hours to three hours of flight time in most helicopters and depending on the size of the fuel tank that's going to dictate how far you can get now you can get external and auxiliary fuel tanks for some helicopters um, you can get like bladders that go in the back of them especially for um, if you're ferrying an aircraft from say north america over to europe what you can do is you can go over the pole and over greenland um, but you have to have an auxiliary tank fitted into the back of the aircraft which is then going to increase your fuel capacity which means you can get further on your fuel supply before you need refueling but it increases weight so the other thing is how many engines do you have i have one engine in this and it sucks up about 180 liters of jet fuel every hour um, if I have two engines, well, we're up at 360 liters an hour. So it's gonna get through this 540 liter fuel tank pretty quickly. So um, helicopters that have two engines will generally have a much larger fuel tank to help give the flight time something useful because if I've only got 540 liters and I'm burning through 350, 360 liters an hour, it's not very long, I'm not gonna get very far. Um, so everything in a helicopter is all about a compromise and depending on how far you want it to go is gonna be how, how many compromises they wanna make within the aircraft with the design stage and also things like the drag, the size of the fuel tank, the engines they pick for their fuel burn rate, things like that. The other thing that's gonna dictate how far a helicopter can go is the wind. And 
you can use mother nature um, to some extent to really help get you further and the way that you do that is by having a tailwind so if the wind is blowing from behind me it's basically going to be giving me a push as I fly through the air so um, let's say I'm traveling at 100 knots and I've got a 50 knot wind outside I can technically have a ground speed basically my shadow will be going over the ground at 150 knots the problem is if then the wind is coming in the other direction straight at me at 50 knots I could technically have a ground speed of 50 knots over the ground but yet I'm showing 100 knots on my airspeed indicator because I've got 50 knots coming at me and I'm going forward at 100 knots it's basically 100 minus 50 and I've got a ground speed then at 50 knots um, so if you need to fly a long long way um, what I will do as a pilot is I'll look at the upper wind forecast and I'll see which way hopefully we've got the wind in some form of a, uh, a tailwind and I can climb up to those altitudes where there's the wind is behind me and get mother nature to give me a big push to get me further now this machine is great for operating as a utility role but it would suck as a search and rescue machine for say the coast guard because I couldn't get too far in it and then when I did I couldn't rescue too many people um, so the machines like the um, Leonardo AW101 is an awesome awesome search and rescue machine it's perfect for search and rescue and it's used by many search and rescue outfits all over the world because it's got um, great legs it can go at high speed very very far it's got a huge cabin in it so you can actually do something once you get there and actually rescue quite a few people um, and that is about the limits we're at the things that are changing now within the industry are now pushing those boundaries because we have the things like the hybrid helicopters as they are called we've got the Airbus X3 we've got the Sikorsky X2 um, and we've also got the tilt rotors like the Bell Osprey V22 but that's just a military version um, but we have the civilian version from Leonardo which is the AW609 and that has the rotors up at the top and then they can tilt them forward and those machines you know they're up around about 250 knots um, which is huge for a helicopter or a hybrid helicopter um, and I think that's around about 290 miles an hour and around about the four um, 450 460 kilometers per hour so um, the distance that they can cover you know you're, you're almost like you're fixed wing speeds now so um, I can see those aircraft really coming into the search and rescue roles as they get developed over the next 10 years and it's going to really increase the distance that helicopters can travel especially offshore um, the only problem is the further you can go the more time you're sitting in there and um, I can tell you after hours of sitting in one of these things you're ready to get out and take a break so the longer it can fly the further it can fly the more time your ass is going to be stuck to that seat um, so there's a bit of a compromise you know is yeah we can go far distances but unless it's comfortable which generally most of these aren't too comfortable anyway um, you're going to be hurting your butt yeah so that's kind of basically how far most helicopters can go you know we're in the 200 to 500 um, nautical mile range for helicopters like this you get up into the the bigger twin helicopters uh, they're starting to go up to the you know the 800 the thousand and that's a long way for a helicopter nowhere near as much as a plane but planes can't hover onto a helipad out in the middle of the ocean so helicopters are awesome for that but they are a little bit slower so I hope you found this enjoyable and I hope I answered some of your questions um, if you did hit that like button I uh, really appreciate it. it really helps the channel out if you're new to this channel hit that subscribe button and the notification bell I have new stuff coming out like this all the time and if you like this I will see you on the next one